Hello, my name is Andrea. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss surgical treatment. This lesson is divided into four parts. In part one, we'll describe the operating theater. In part two, we'll mention some surgical instruments. In part three, we'll describe the operation. And in part four, we'll review an operation report. Let's get started. We'll begin with part one, the operating theater. Surgery is carried out in an operating theater. Great care is taken to make sure that operations take place in sterile conditions. Sterile means free from microorganisms. The entire room, all the instruments, and everyone present in the room must be sterilized. Now, we'll describe how a medical team prepares for surgery. The surgeon and their assistant wash or scrub up and put on surgical gowns, masks, and gloves. The patient's skin is prepared by disinfecting it with an antiseptic solution. This is known as prepping, preparing the patient. They are then covered with sterile drapes so that only the area of the operation is exposed. Next, let's move on to instruments. Here are the most basic surgical instruments. Retractor. Scalpel. Artery forceps. Dissecting forceps. Scissors. Different surgery will require more specific instruments, depending on which part of the body is being treated. Let's see part three, the operation. Let's describe the procedure of an operation. The operation begins when the surgeon makes an incision or cut. Control of bleeding is very important. A swab is a pad of cotton or other material used to soak up blood from the operation site. A sucker is a mechanical device which aspirates, meaning it sucks up blood. Bleeding vessels are tied with ligatures or sealed by an electric current called diathermy. Drains may be inserted to carry away fluid which might act as a culture medium for bacteria. Various methods are used to close the wound, for example, sutures, also known as stitches, or staples. Finally, the wound is covered with a dressing or sterile bandages. Finally, let's see part four, an operation report. Here, we can read a report done after an operation. It reads as follows. This patient had an indirect right inguinal hernia. Anesthesia. Spinal anesthetic with local anesthetic infiltration. Incision. Right inguinal. Procedure. The external oblique aponeurosis was divided and the spermatic cord mobilized. The hernial sac was identified and separated from the spermatic cord. The hernial sac was then mobilized back to its neck, where it was transfixed and the redundant tissue excised. The fascia at the neck of the spermatic cord was divided carefully, preserving the vessels the genital branch of the nerve, and the vas deferens. Thereafter, the posterior wall of the inguinal canal was repaired in two layers. Closure. The wound was closed in layers with dextan suture material to the external oblique aponeurosis and staples to the skin. 
that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed this class. See you soon.